Part 7, Federal and State Laws Pertaining to Real Estate, 4%. Getchen Cherry, founder of Homestead Realty. As always, I thank you for watching and your continued support. And if this is your first time to this channel, I welcome you and I thank you for watching. As well, if you would like to be notified when I post new videos, please subscribe and click on the bell. In this episode of Let's Talk Real Estate, I will go over 20 questions, both fill in the blanks and multiple choice questions to help you pass your real estate exam. Number one, the 1866 Civil Rights Act prohibited discrimination on the basis of blank. Well, here, the answer is race. After the Civil War, Congress passed a law that prohibited any kind of discrimination based on race. This law was, entire, was designed to protect former slaves, and there were no exception. That is known as the 1866 Civil Rights Act. Number two, lenders that refuse to make loans in certain geographical areas based on social or economic considerations are practicing blank. Well, this term is referred to as redlining. Number three, a violation of the Florida Telephone Solicitation Act could result in a fine of up to blank. Well, Florida has a registry, just like the federal do not call registry. That's what they're referring to. So if you contact someone who is registered, if you're any kind of retailing or any kind of uh, marketing, or if you are a real estate agent, more likely you will be making cold calls, but you are required to make sure that the individual is not registered on the Florida do not call registry. And if you do, every time you violate that, that could potentially be a fine of up to $10,000. So this is what they're referring to. The Florida do not call registry. Number four, a licensee may call a customer who appears on the do not call list within blank months after the customer purchased a home. Well, here it is after 18 months. What they're basically saying here is, the law provides some exceptions. The exceptions, for example, this particular exception is if, let's say I had a customer who purchased a home with me or who sold a home with me, and that happened within the last 18 months. Well, I may contact that individual to solicit their business, even if they are in the do not call, even if they are registered with the do not call registry, I am exempt i have that exemption where i can contact them because they are a prior customer number five a landlord who intends to make a damage claim against a security deposit must notify a tenant of such intention within blank days well the landlord must notify the tenant within 30 days that the landlord plans to make a claim on the deposit for damages, for example. Number six, an owner who does not use the services of a broker and does not discriminate in advertising is blank from the Civil Rights Act of 1968. Well, this is exempt. 1968, the 1968 Civil Rights Act it exempt owners so the law provides some exemption there because if an individual owns a home a single family home and that includes up to four units so one two three four units if the person is occupying one of the units well the law says if they're not using a broker and they're not discriminating in their advertisement. In other words, not saying a certain group of people may not apply. The law says because they're occupying a unit, it's like a private home. So therefore, they are exempt from all the requirements of that law. 
But if they are using a brokerage, the services of a brokerage, all bets are off. The brokerage must follow the law to the T. Number seven, according to the American with Disability Act, also known as ADA, owners are required to make modification to properties to comply with the act, whatever the modifications are, blank, blank. Well, economically feasible, whenever it is economically feasible. Actually, the law says readily achievable and economically feasible. So the law, the ADA Act, requires any entity that has businesses or where their doors are open to the public, well, they must remove all barriers to that would prevent people with disability from access, uh, accessing their business. But the law says the modifications must be readily achievable and economically feasible, meaning these things should not break the bank and there should be modification that can relatively be done if the property was built before the act went into effect. But if it's been built after, it must be built according to the law. Number eight, a violation of the federal fair housing law is also a violation of blank. Therefore, a licensee found guilty of a violation of the federal housing law would face possible disciplinary action by the blank. Well, here, a violation of federal housing law is also a violation of FS-475. So therefore, that individual, whoever is found guilty of violating the Fair Housing Act can also, will also face disciplinary action by FREC, also known as the commission. Now, we understand there's a term people often mis misconstrue beyond the term double jeopardy, for example. People think, well, double jeopardy means you cannot be prosecuted for the same crime. Well, that is part of the equation, part of the language. But in reality, double jeopardy means one cannot be prosecuted for the same crime within the same jurisdiction. So that means, well, let me break it down a little bit. Florida statutes, that is under Florida law. Federal housing law, that is under federal law. And commission, FREC rules fall under administrative law. So a person who violates a law can basic a real estate law or a licensee who violates a law or rule or federal law, state, federal, or a commission rule can face disciplinary action from all three jurisdictions. So therefore, double jeopardy would not apply, would not apply. Number nine. The fact that a property was a site of a blank, blank, or blank is not a material fact that must be disclosed in a real estate transaction. Well, here they're basically saying the fact that a property was the site of a death, that's when a person dies, whether it's natural causes or not. Homicide, obviously that's when someone was killed by someone else or suicide, that is when someone killed him or herself or herself. So the fact that someone died in a property uh, is, not, is not a material fact that must be disclosed. Number 10, federal law governing telephone solicitation prohibits calls to residences after blank. Well, that is 9 p.m. The federal law um, and most state laws as well prohibits solicitation calls. Solicitation calls is when market, you know, marketing agents and telemarketers calling to solicit your business. Before moving on, do me a favor, hover over this picture. 
click subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Number 11, the 1988 Fair Housing Amendment Act expended on the Civil Rights Act of 1968 to include banning discrimination on the basis of what? Well, that would be handicap. In 19, the 1988 amendment to the 1968 Act added two, two protected classes. Those are familial status and handicap. There, remember, race was the 1866 Civil Rights Act. And then in 1968, they added four protected classes. And those four protected classes were color, religion, national origin, and sex. Back then, they referred to gender as sex. Now, but race was always the fifth one. Race is always there. Race has no exception. You cannot discriminate based on race. It added two protected classes. Again, those were familial status and handicap. Number 12, if a seller lists a house with a broker and discriminates against a buyer based on religion, the seller would have violated which regulations? Well, if you were listening carefully, that would be the 1968, because 1968 expended from the 1866, it added, so race was always there, it added religion, national origin, color, and gender, could not discriminate against people based on their sex. So those were the four that were added. So if the person discriminated against a person based on their religion, in that case, that would be a violation of the 1968 Act, Civil Rights Act. Number 13, to what does blockbusting refer? Well, blockbusting is simply inducing when a real estate agent or brokerage induce owners in a particular neighborhood to sell because of a migration of a particular ethnic group into the neighborhood. As starting false rumors such as, well, you see those people over there, whenever they move into a neighborhood, there goes the neighborhood. And putting that in the ether, putting that in the inducing owners to sell. And basically, that would be a violation of federal law, state law, and a real estate agent who is found guilty of that behavior will also face Frex wrath. Number 14, what was the major impact of the Jones v. Mayer Supreme Court case in 1968? Well, that case uphold the restriction. So it strictly prohibits discrimination based on race and there was no exception, no exception. So that law, upheld discrimination based on race with no exception. Well, that particular case, in that particular case, the Supreme Court upheld the 1866 ruling that says discrimination based on race, there will be no exception. You cannot discriminate based on race for any reason. No exceptions there. Number 15. A sales associate tells a customer that he should sell his home because of an end migration of certain ethnic group. What is the term used to describe this situation? We just discussed that. That is blockbusting. Number 16. What is the landlord's first step in the eviction process? Well, a landlord's first step is to give the three-day notice. When a tenant fails to pay rent timely, while well, the landlord will give a three-day notice, in essence, requesting payment or possession of the property. Number 17, complete the sentence. If a tenant with a lease is in possession of a property, the purchaser or judgment creditor will blank. Well, that person will be the purchaser 
or the judgment creditor will be subject to the rights of the tenant. In other words, what they're saying here, a tenant in possession has rights in the property. Number 18, what should a sales associate do if his employing broker instruct him or her not to show properties to people of a certain race? Well, I would say find a new employer. This is a case where an, um, an employing broker is asking an, a sales associate, an associate, to do something that is illegal. Well, if a broker ever asks you to do something illegal, that is probably a good indication you should find a new broker. Number 19, a licensee picks the properties a particular buyer is shown based on the race of the buyer. What is this illegal act? Well, that would be called steering. Steering is when a licensee is making decision on where to show properties to a particular group of people based on their race. So the person wants to live in zone A, the agent feels, well, zone A is a particular group of people there. They would not be comfortable there or they don't want them there. So they'll take them to group C or group D. That's what that's referring to. That's called steering. You're guiding the person to a place, not of their choosing, but it is your choosing. But even if it's their choosing, if it's because of those elements, race, color, religion, national origin, or gender, any of which that is still referred to as steering. We stay away from those. So how do we prevent those? Well, ask the person, do you have a, do you give me a city, a community? You do not make decision based on things like race, color, religion, national origin, or gender or sex for that matter. Number 20, telling homeowners that minority families are moving into their neighborhood in an attempt to get them to sell their home and move is referred to as which of the following? Well, again, that's busting the block or block busting. Okay, block busting is when an agent, a real estate agent, a real estate professional is in essence starting a rumor telling homeowners that a particular group of people are moving in that's going to depreciate the value of their home and they should sell. That is called blockbusting. Again, please don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, and like. I've been under the weather terribly bad, but I didn't want that to stop me from keeping my words to you. And so if my voice sound a little grouchy or a little rough, my apologies, but I have been under the weather. Nonetheless, thank you for, your, for watching. Thank you for your continued support. And remember, I post every Tuesdays and Thursdays, no matter what. I will continue to post, even do it throughout the holidays. Um, I will keep my words. And hopefully, those of you who are preparing, hopefully you find value in this. And hopefully, it will help you accomplish your goal. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a blessed and wonderful day.